Our next speaker is Mr. Tom Gardner, who is the head of wholesale at 3 UK. And Tom is going to be talking about the unexplored potential of M to M machine to machine. So please could you join them a very warm welcome to Tom. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Okay, this was the slides that coming up. I'll do a quick introduction to myself. So, yes, um, I'm Tom Gardner. I work for three the network operators in the UK. Um, I'm responsible for uh, our MDNO and machine to machine business. And I'm going to take you through um, a short presentation today because I'm conscious we want to try and get some time back. Uh, the, what we feel is the unexplored potential of machine to machine. You know, we hear a lot about the legacy markets like smart metering, telematics, but what else is out there? What else can we focus on? What's the high data usage markets? So, as an agenda, I'll give a quick uh, overview of 3UK, very, very quick for those who aren't familiar. Uh, then the unexplored machine to machine market and approach, so uh, who's best uh, there to serve it's the mobile network operator, the MVNO, system integrators, uh, what are the requirements and challenges in those markets, what's the sort of value added services they require, what kind of support do they require, and then the innovative pricing to capitalise, so how do we monetize these uh, high value markets, how do we drive higher amplitudes, and then finally, we feel there's a lot of um, unexplored potential in some of the legacy uh, machines and machine markets which I'll cover off as well. So straight in then, so 3UK, I guess so you know, out of town is in here, 3UK are a uh, mobile network operator in the UK, we only operate a 3G network and we currently carry, uh, we currently have 13% of the UK voice market, 40% uh, of the mobile broadband market, but what's probably most impressive about 3 is we actually carry 44% of the UK's entire mobile data traffic, which is a colossal number, there's four network operators in the UK. So what's been uh, driving this, um, uh, this um, well, what's happened in data really? So since 2007, when uh, this, uh, this graph really starts, you can see there's been exponential data growth on our network. And what's really been driving this? I mean, we can probably plus on here a number of things. In 2007, we first started focusing on mobile broadband dongles, which obviously drove some increase. Then smartphones yeah, started really becoming available, the iPhone, Android devices, which kicked it on further. Then we've got devices like the MiFi, tablets, embedded connectivity, machine to machine and away we go. And it actually, it actually, in fact, if you compare our data growth to voice and voice being the blue line on here, if we were to convert voice into um, a data a data entity, that's what it would look like. So voice has maybe doubled over the space of four years, whereas data has absolutely gone through the roof. So what's been driving this? Well, I mean, common things here you'll be familiar with. As I said, you know, smartphones play a big part in this. But if we look at the iPhone, uh, HTC, and Samsung devices, the most common devices we tend to see, uh, in the space of just a short few months, usage has actually trebled on a lot of these devices. People are becoming really familiar with mobile data. They want it, they need it, and it's a similar concept in machine to machine. And it's not just on smartphones. Uh, recently, it's just announced that 3UK are now the uh, fifth largest internet service provider in the UK. So we're only a mobile network. We don't have any fixed lines whatsoever. But we are now the fifth largest internet service provider. And this is a common trend I think we'll see as the industry goes forward, uh, as more and more mobile operators come into the fixed line space. So as you probably picked up by now, the, yeah, three strategy, our position, our strength really is data, data, data. Um, data usage is going through the roof, but we are in a good position to handle it. Uh, we're a pure 3G network, everything is Ethernet backhaul, so managing capacity is, yeah, well, I wouldn't say easy because someone from our technical team would shoot me, but um, it's uh, maybe easier than some other networks. So a, quick, a little bit about the um, uh, about three, uh, who we are, yeah, quick overview for you. So the evolving machine to machine market and approach, what are the unexplored markets, the um, uh, title of the presentation? Well first of all, let's look at the legacy markets. So the legacy markets being security, point of sale, smart metering, telematics, and many of you will use different names to describe these markets. And uh, what I've done is plot them on a the graph here, um, simply in terms of number of connections that are maybe in the market right now versus uh, the actual data requirements. And as we know, a lot of these markets use tiny amounts of data, and therefore the AMPU in these markets is pretty small. Yeah, it could be, yeah, there may be millions of connections, but what are they, like a pound a month, something like that, not massively high AMPU connections. 
what we're really excited in is the unexplored potential of machine to machine, specifically around high data usage. And what markets do I mean by that? Well, going from the, the top left, we have transport Wi Fi backhaul. So there's a lot of business now in putting uh, 3G SIM cards in trains, buses, taxis, converting that into Wi Fi and making it available uh, for the passengers. CCTV, uh, a fairly obvious one. We're seeing more and more security companies, police forces using 3G as a way of backhauling um, all their images. It's a fantastic way. If, if, you know, if you take a camera with a battery in, put a SIM card in, you can deploy it anywhere. You haven't got to worry about a fixed line power yeah, in, in terms of a, sub, a quick surveillance solution. Um, it's really, really good. We've got digital signage on there. So wherever you go now, there's digital screens, uh, the roadside, shopping centers, airports, wherever it may be. Um, and there's a, big, there's a huge use uh, in these markets for 3G, the ability to quickly upload and download uh, new adverts, new content. Fits broadband backup. Some people would maybe argue this isn't necessarily a machine to machine market, but we certainly class it as. So if you're an enterprise, a business, and your fixed line broadband goes down, there's a SIM card in there for 3G which comes to life. We've actually taken this a step further recently by deploying the uh, layer 2 tunneling protocol on our network, which actually enables the end customer to assign the exact same IP address that it had on the fixed line um, as on, on, the, um, on the mobile SIM. So it's completely seamless continuity. We've got health Care in there. I guess healthcare is a bit of a crossover between sort of 2G, 3G. There's some real low usage stuff, but then again, there's going to be a lot of a lot of high usage stuff. And then I also have value-added service mobile broadband on there, which I'm sure we did argue again. This isn't a machine-to-machine -machine service. This is mobile broadband. But actually, if you're investing in machine-to-machine, -machine, a lot of the value-added services around fixed IP addressing, dedicated access point names, uh, online reporting, a lot of that can actually be applied to a uh, enterprise broadband solution. So if you are a machine machine envy you know there's a huge opportunity for you in the enterprise uh, mobile broadband space and as a 3G only operator well obviously we'd like to see every single market in the top right uh, of a screen there uh, which would be fantastic millions of connections massive data usage but what's really going to drive those markets there is certainly coverage and uh, speed which we're working on uh, we just started rolling out the 42 megabits per second software, which is now on 20% uh, of our sites, and obviously price as well. So the price of connectivity, the price of the modules, the price of the value-added services. So just a quick overview of the markets, legacy stuff, uh, where we see it going, the unexplored potential. Who's servicing that market right now? Well, the MNOs um, are certainly all over the legacy stuff, so the security, point of sale, telematics, smart metering. There's a lot of people winning big bids for hundreds of thousands, millions of connections. But when it comes to the high data traffic stuff, the new markets, we really strongly believe that this is going to be um, a huge opportunity for the system integrators and MVNOs. All these markets require a huge value-added service. Uh, there's a lot of technical capability that can really only be delivered by people who are already very, very capable in those markets, partnering up with a connectivity provider, people who understand what CCTV companies need, and they're putting that wrap around the connectivity. And then obviously we have the module and SIM manufacturers who have a huge part to play in all this in terms of the, the cost of the modules and the new functionality uh, in all the in the routers and the SIM manufacturers as well as the likes of them. Um, uh, are constantly evolving SIMs to uh, cope with machine to machine. And I guess just to bring this to life, I mean, this, is, I mean, this is purely based on the UK, um, I guess what's key is that um, although um, 3G machine to machine, we're talking about less connections, we're talking about high amounts of data here, high amounts, um, high value added services. So although there aren't as many connections, the actual amplitude per connection is, is huge. Um, so for every one CCTV camera in the UK, so for every 14 people in the UK, there's one CCTV camera. There are currently 4,000 UK trains. There's 21,000 black cabs in London, uh, I'm sure there's plenty more around the rest of the country, 6,800 buses, and I'm sure there's going to be even more come the Olympics, there's over 100,000 UK outdoor advertising screens, and still over 150,000 uh, UK billboards ready to be upgraded for digital signage. So just a quick snapshot there in terms of bringing the, the 3G machine to machine opportunity to life. So there's a bit about the markets, where we see the potential, the future, the opportunity. How do we go about servicing these markets? Um, 
worth noticing the highlight is, in terms of legacy markets, a first-line support structure was probably sufficient. The sort of services we were having to support for these guys in smart meeting and things like online estate sim management, uh, aggregated pricing, uh, sim activation, deactivation. But as we start to move up the value chain in terms of high bandwidth for new markets, there's a whole world of value-added services that we have to support. Location-based services, fixed IP addressing, dedicated access point names, LTTP. And actually, once you've taken all of these services, you may as well be a full-blown MBNO on the network. You're no longer a customer. You may as well be a full MBNO. All of this requires second-line, third-line, very highly skilled, highly technical support, which once again emphasizes what I think is the need for specialist partners uh, to go to market. So we're going to speak a little bit now about um, uh, yeah, how historically three have gone to market in machine to machine and how we think that needs to evolve uh, to something far more efficient. I will. There we go. And, uh, so historically the 3D machine to machine market or the addressable one has looked something like this. It's been rather slim and we've serviced it through um, our business machine to machine channel, uh, MVNOs. Uh, we've had our retail channel causing all sorts of confusion by people going into stores and trying to buy SIMs for machine to machine applications. Um, and then really where machine to machine sits in 3 is within wholesale and with MVNOs. But what ultimately this structure has caused is a very heavy MVNO, uh, so a very heavy MNO. It's very difficult for us to service uh, the machine to machine market through all of these channels. It creates a lot of resource conflicts and priority conflicts within the MNO, which unfortunately ultimately means a reduced addressable market for us. So, what we're really looking, looking to do to change this. So, first of all, we obviously want to see a larger 3G machine to machine market. Uh, we're going to be looking to service that through business resellers and light MBOs. We're looking to uh, reduce the required um, technical capability and capex for existing machine to machine MBOs and new ones coming on board. And ultimately, we feel that by putting a machine to machine enabler, as we'll be announcing in the next couple of months, at the heart, the very heart of our business, we'll be in a fantastic position to serve a much larger machine to machine market through MVNOs. So, what this ultimately means is we become a lighter MNO, far more nimble, far more innovative, far more uh, equipped to react to market changes. Machine to machine operates autonomously within through, uh, so we get far more prioritization. Uh, we put up Chinese walls between the rest of the business. We have much more extensive capability in terms of enabling uh, our machine to machine partners. We have access to a much larger, wider machine to machine MVO base which ultimately means we have a much larger addressable market. So that's a little bit about the, uh, the market, uh, the opportunity, how we feel it's best to approach the market. So how do we enable this through innovative pricing? You know, what's the monetization opportunity? So when it comes to pricing mobile data, there's a number of options and there's also a number of innovative options that we've been employing. So um, a lot of people you know, often ask for a low data rate, or well, a low data rate is perfectly achievable, but it usually comes at the cost of a fixed monthly connection fee that will come with that. What we've recently been exploring is minimum average usage policies. So if you have 100,000 SIM cards from us, but actually only 10,000 of them ever generate any traffic, we're not going to penalise you for the other 90,000, as long as there's a minimum average usage or a minimum average margin being generated across all SIM cards. What we've also been looking at are uh, bulk terabytes, so we've been offering our partners the ability to buy large amounts of data up front, whether it be 10, 50, 100 terabytes, and then enabling the partner to cut that data however they choose, giving them real flexibility in terms of going to market. In other ways, we can actually increase AMPU uh, in these markets. We can, there's a whole world of services we can add on here. So fixed IP addressing, a very common one. The layer two tunneling protocol, which I touched on, which is enabling our end customers to assign IP addresses from their own range. Dedicated access point names, again, a huge opportunity in 3G machine to machine. And then finally, as we all aware, there's a whole world of vertical specific value added services we can stick on here. So we as an operator very much have a horizontal strategy and we believe very strongly in partnering with the right people who can you know, go the last mile and tailor the service to be vertical specific. We also feel there's a strong potential and a lot of unexplored potential in some of the legacy machine to machine markets. So I mentioned at the start uh, smart metering, telematics, security and point of sale being very legacy, 2G, low, low, uh, 
uh, low data traffic markets, high connection amounts. Um, but we see a huge opportunity here by enabling these markets for 3G. So take smart metering as an example. If you actually invest now and embed 3G within these devices, in the future we can actually expand on the service to all those smart meters. We can start looking at things like home automation. We can um, change that. We can uh, migrate that SIM to all of a sudden become a home broadband solution. We can do a home phone solution, for example. So via VoIP, maybe the data SIM and the smart meter could provide that home phone solution. And then finally, data aggregation. So rather than deploying a SIM card in, in every single smart meter, why don't we just have one meter um, servicing one road, which via Zigbee, something like that, aggregates all the data together, and then via 3G, sends it all back. So our SIM, our SIM estate becomes that much easier to monitor. Telematics, there's a huge opportunity here to move from simple data capture around uh, yeah, how many miles you've done, what the tire pressure is, what the oil pressure is, to actually moving into infotainment, uh, delivering in-car Wi-Fi, video streaming, news updates, whatever it may be. In security, well, there's a lot of them, um, a lot of security guards out there who wander around with some sort of you know, tag on them to you know, track where they are, and make sure they're okay. Well, we can expand that to implement it, push the talk services, a CCTV solution, so we can always see what the security card sees if there is if there is a problem. And mobile broadband, well, why don't we give them access to some sort of mobile broadband via the device so they don't get too bored? And then point of sale, well, we can look at fast bill payments. But also, a really interesting thing for point of sale is push advertising. So we find a restaurant and I and I pay for something um, uh, rather than rather than just waiting whilst my um, uh, yeah, my transaction goes through or hoping it goes through um, uh, I can maybe receive push advertising offers so if I'm in a pub or I'm in a restaurant uh, they know I'm there they can push to me that there's a club around the corner there's a theatre around the corner there's a special offer on why don't you go and check it out it's a huge opportunity there by enabling all these devices for 3G and that's it guys thank you very much I'll tell you be quick Questions we have? If you have, please raise your hands. Lady at the uh, extreme far left, uh, please could you give us your um, name and company? And I'm going to do it shortly. Thank you. Hello. Um, it's working. If you just uh, press the button there. It's fine, actually. It's working now. Try again. Okay, yes. I'm Karen Jude from Rogue Matter Research. Um, I noticed you mentioned the subject of um, new pricing models for M2M. Yeah. I've noticed a lot of people talk about um, saving the customer money by saving data up on the device to send when data is cheaper. Yeah. So do you have plans to introduce um, peak and off-peak pricing? Uh, definitely, yes. So in terms of the capability we're looking to implement in our in our platform, we're certainly looking to support um, off-peak uh, data pricing. Um, it's, it's been a dream for a long time with our technical guys. Thank you. Any other questions? If you do, please raise your hand so we can spot you. Um, I suppose there are none, so please give a warm uh, round of applause for Tom Gardner.